US billion dollars flying aircraft that is finally ready for action. The US aircraft carriers are about to become real flying aircraft just like the aircraft that take off from them. These aircraft carriers would fly in the skies as opposed to the seas. This can change a lot in the wars of the future. In today's video, we will be talking about the US billion dollars flying aircraft that is finally ready for action. Although the concept of flying aircraft is uncommon, it is not a new project. It has been around since the times of world wars, undergoing several tests and developments. Thanks to the advent of technology, old but ambitious aircraft have gained attention again and the US is aiming for revolutionary flying carriers. This will make the United States the undisputed top dog not only in the sea but also in the airspace. Aircraft carriers can be compared to a small town floating on the water. The USS Gerald R. Ford is a great example. It is gigantic and powerful. The carrier is 1,106 feet long and 256 feet wide and is powered by two Betchel A-1B nuclear reactors. The Ford accommodates over 75 aircraft and 4,500 crew members. The function of this ship is to protect and create security for their battle groups. To make this possible, they need to fly the aircraft riding on them. The USS Enterprise aircraft carrier is the world's first nuclear aircraft carrier. It is propelled by four shaft axles and eight nuclear reactors with each reactor connected to two shaft axles. The use of nuclear propellants has changed aircraft carriers. It has increased the range of these ships and provided other advantages that are already found in Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. The force of the USS Enterprise aircraft carrier can increase the speed to over 35 knots and can also provide the same level of propulsion for up to five years. The array of radars installed on this ship provided adequate radar coverage for the vessel. This radar system was later used on different vessels like those equipped with the Aegis system and a large number of other military vessels. Over the years, several updates have been made to the ship's machinery, electronic systems, aircraft, refueling, and weapons. The ship's entry into the U.S. surface fleet increased the U.S. Navy's air power and also changed aircraft carrier technology, a leap that has now led to the idea of a flying aircraft. Let's look back at an attempt to create a flying aircraft carrier based on the legendary Boeing 747. In the 1970s, Boeing worked on the Flying Aircraft Carrier Project, which was intended to convert the largest passenger jet at that time into a sky-hovering aircraft carrier capable of launching tiny fighters. About 10 Boeing 985 microfighters were supposed to fit inside the pressurized compartment of the 747. Each of them was hung on a conveyor system, and the fighters were located above one of two special launch bays. The operators lowered the plane as low as possible to the compartment after which it opened and the microfighter flew out. They also placed launch and landing trapezes at the nose and tail of the flying aircraft carrier. The launch interval was 80 seconds, and it took about 10 minutes to refuel the fighter to battle. The main requirement for the micro-aircraft was to reduce the wingspan to 17.3 feet so it could fit easily into the body of the aircraft. Because the performance characteristics of the planned 985 microfighters were to be superior to the Soviet aircraft, Boeing would have to been able to engage in battle with superior enemy forces. The project was approved by the U.S. Air Force for further development in 1973, and the Boeing 747-200 was chosen as the carrier. They decided to refine the microfighters, providing more weapons and greater speed. Although the new project had been prepared as of 1974, the Air Force was unable to get additional funding and in a year, work on the project was curtailed. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like if you are loving the content. Flying carriers have started gaining attention again, and this time it could be owed in a large part to the complete dominance of American sea-based aircraft carriers. In fact, 25% of the world's aircraft carriers belong to the U.S., with their total deck space being more than double that of all other nations combined. Also, the members of the lead USS Ford class of these aircraft carriers are far more lethal than those of other aircraft carriers in history. This is proven by some features of the ship, which include nuclear power, two Betchel A1B nuclear reactors. The USS Gerald Ford is powered by the most cutting-edge engines created for use on water. As a result, the carrier would only need to be refueled once in its entire 50-year operational life. This is because these engines make use of the unending nature of nuclear energy. 
This means that the USS Ford can run for 25 years at a time without refueling, and with a peak speed of around 30 knots, the carrier can access every country in the world. New Sensors and Processing Systems USS Ford is equipped with the latest sensors, processors, and weapons that are needed on an aircraft carrier to maintain the balance of intelligence. Unlike almost all other aircraft carriers in the world, the USS Ford comes with a single system for both horizon and volume search in the form of a SPY-3 multifunction radar for X and S-band active electronically scanned array. It remains the most advanced radar system in the U.S. with enough versatility to handle surveillance, missile communications, air traffic control, and spot targets from miles away. American Fighter Jets and UAVs About 75 unmanned aerial vehicles and fighter jets can call the USS Ford at any time, including the Navy's fifth-generation F-35C Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter, whose development has been the most expensive weapons development program of the Pentagon. It has a reported cost of $400 billion. The result of this expensive program is a fighter that really can close air support, perform vertical takeoff and landing, and other things, making it the modern go-to fighter for the Navy and other departments of the military. This will go on until the sixth-generation F-A-XX fighter takes the center stage. In preparation for this, the USS Ford is already equipped with the technologies required to host the launch and recover it. All these and many more combined to make the U.S. undefeatable on the sea. An airborne version of them could also make them undefeatable in the skies, and this has been an ultimate goal with many programs created to achieve this goal. Speaking of the potentiality of flying aircraft, it is obvious that the military will save a huge amount of money in the future because instead of two fighters at a cost of millions of dollars, there will be a swarm of gremlins sent to perform combat missions at a cost less than $100,000 per unit. The Pentagon plans to get ready for full-time flying aircraft carriers by 2030. So we can likely assume that the U.S. will not only be the country with the most powerful fleet of aircraft carriers at sea, but also those with the most powerful fleet of aircraft carriers in the air.